Six beautiful pharaoh and ball colors to talk about today, but the star of the show is Bancha, number 298. Or is it Bancha, like Mana La Mancha? I didn't tell you guys, I'm a bit of a music theater nerd, also singer, but you only need to know me as James from The Paint People. Okay, I like this color. It's sort of a mid-century modern deep green. I think it's beautiful. And today what we're going to do is go through some details about it. And also I got three color pairings and two trim colors that you can use with it. It's free color advice, my friend. Take it or leave it. And all you need to do is just give me a solid bop of that like button for good vibes, please. So if you're a subscriber or you've been watching our videos for a while, you probably know I love green. I just love its connection with nature and serenity. I also appreciate how varied it can be. You can go from a light airy turquoise to a deep earthy forest green and then have everything in between as well. Green can also be great at being transitional so you can connect the dots between your warm and cool colors in your home or your overall design. But what kind of green is Bancha? Well, we can definitely say that it's quite dark and normally, <laughs> Normally, we can find this out by looking at the company's website and then looking for the LRV, or the light reflectance value. But unfortunately for us, Fairone Ball, they don't advertise LRV very prominently. So what I did was I just found a fairly comparable color within Benjamin Moore's catalog, just for example, and I got that color's light reflectance value, which is around 13. So, I would assume that Bansha is around a 13 as well. If you're not too certain what all this means, the light reflectance value, the LRV, just think of it as a lightness score, where zero is black and 100 is pure white. And the fact that Bansha sits around 12 or 13, it just tells us. It's a very deep green that doesn't reflect much light at all. That also means it'll naturally make a room feel darker, more cave-like, which I don't think is a bad thing, by the way, especially if you're looking for a bit of drama visually. You could describe this as a deep olive green because it's rich and a bit warm feeling rather than cool or blue leaning. Generally speaking, I feel like you can get a little more use out of dark greens that favor the warmer side of things because they play better with other warmer colors that are already going to be pretty prevalent in a lot of your homes. Like, I mean, brown is the obvious one. If you have hardwood flooring, green is such a natural fit, no matter what kind of color you're going with. But also you have your beiges, your creams, your grayges, and my favorite, green age. Shout out to James White by Pharaoh Ball, the lightest green age in the game. And also for our newer viewers watching, green age is just green plus beige. It's not an actual word, but the paint people crew, we're gonna get it in the dictionary one day, I promise you. I've had more and more people embracing dark green nowadays, almost to the point where it's sort of giving navy blue a run for its money. And when you think about it, those two colors, they do have similarities in the sense that they're both obviously dark, and I guess you can think of them as both starting with a deep blue base, and then you just add a bunch of yellow to get green. I don't actually have access to Pharaoh Ball's paint formulas, so I can't tell you if they just made Bancha with a bunch of blue and yellow, or maybe they just use green, which is probably more accurate. This is getting too technical. Why don't we talk about how to use this color? That would be helpful, right? Because we're dealing with a color that's very dark, you're more likely going to use this in pockets throughout your home. I have a color very similar in my studio where all the walls are green. So we have like three panels and then we have this off white wall to the side that just extends into the rest of the basement and that's just the basement color. So that's sort of the connecting wall. And then I have these other green walls to sort of separate the space. That's how I laid it out. I would also really recommend it using in an entire room if green, especially dark greens, are the type of colors you enjoy. Just be aware though, if you don't have a ton of good lighting, it may make this dark color feel even darker. But on the flip side, if you get a lot of good light coming through your windows especially, this color will be further enhanced the more light you throw at it. Apparently this color is named after Japanese tea leaves, so I think you'll get a nice peaceful vibe from it overall. Doesn't that sound nice? But for every accent color, you do need a couple of other choices to provide some variety to your color palette. And that's why I picked three other Pharaoh and Ball colors that will help complete your beautiful color palette based around good old Bancha. So let's go through them. Right before you press that subscribe button, if you haven't already, 
That was slick. But seriously, if you're enjoying this video so far and want to stay up to date with our six uploads every single week, that red subscribe button is just waiting for you to press. So I want to start off with a warm off-white that can work as a strong base for Bansha, and that's Lime White. Don't worry, this isn't white with a bit of lime green in it. <laughs> it's actually more of a chalky off-white that's named after an early form of lime wash or those lime powdery pigments that were used in artistic finishes. And lime wash is obviously used today as well. But that's what I love about Ferron Ball paint colors. They all seem to have this really strong connection to architecture and design, historically speaking. Every color seems historically tethered somehow, which is really, really cool. This this color is warm, it's soft, it's a bit chalky like I said, it also has the slightest hint of green in the undertones that will sometimes be more prevalent than other times based on lighting especially, but it will naturally fit perfectly next to Bansha. This is my light color suggestion as your great foundation for your color palette, so think about using it in more open areas like hallways that are connecting to other parts of your home. Second color is Railings, which is a very dramatic off black that's also extremely popular. It's another dark choice that will really pop, even against the similarly dark Bansha. It has the slightest blue undertone, which will be even more obvious in north facing rooms. Also, if you use a lot of LED lighting with those bright white or even blue kind of light bulbs, you'll see that blue that much more. And I think it could be a nice cool charcoal pop within a room otherwise painted with that beautiful dark green. I could also see this being used throughout a room. Well, maybe in like a chic powder room, let's say. And I think that deep dark black will make Bansha look that much more energetic and cozy in comparison, going from cool black to deep green. This is also a very cool door color, both inside and outside. My third choice is another neutral, but it takes things into a peachy pinky direction, and it's called Setting Plaster. This is another historic color that would look really pink back in the day, but ever since the invention of Barbie, we now know what real pink looks like, don't we? Setting Plaster is a beautiful combination of beige, pink, and also some yellow pigment, which gives it a wonderful peachy quality to it that I really enjoy. There's enough of that dusty red undertone within it to complement and bounce off of the green undertones found in Lime White and especially Bansha. So that relationship will be quite lovely. And then setting plaster mixed with railings is kind of fun too, because you have that juxtaposition of a playful pinky color with an extremely brutalist, dramatic off black to really balance things out in an interesting way. Now we get to the two trim colors that you can use on your baseboards, doors, trims, crown moldings, whatever isn't drywall basically. I would go with Schoolhouse White for the lighter color, which you could interpret as an even more powdery version of Lime White, which means it'll look clean and cute no matter which wall color you end up with. I don't know why it's cute, but. It just is. For a darker trim color, I opted for Studio Green. I love this color. It's an awesome deep slate green, I guess I would call it, that combines green with black. It's even darker than Bancha, so you still have that nice contrast between your walls and your baseboards, but you can also just continue Bancha onto that trim if you wanted a more subtle, seamless look. Just make sure that your wall color is painted with wall paint, and then on your baseboards, you're going with a nice washable trim paint. Very important. Here's the palette all together. Let me know what you think. And here's another palette for your enjoyment because I make a lot of these and they're all really fun. 